There we go. Okay. Uh, so I did want to do some texture painting on the column, and I did want to do some texture painting on the chandelier, right? And like previous texturing videos, I'm going to cover a lot of what we're going to do, but I'm, uh, it's more like I'm going to show you guys how the tools work um, and how to use some of these tools. And I'm not going to worry about getting every little part of the texture painted perfectly, right, or um, completed. Uh, it's more than anything, if I show you enough, you know how to use it, and it's just complete the process, right? So uh, for our column, we know that we already kind of have default UVs that work pretty well, right? We get a, we get a little bit of stretching here, but usually some stretching is not going to be catastrophic to your texture painting quality, right? Um, if we had, like, text tools um, and the rectify feature, we'd be able to get those a little bit better, but uh, it's one of the things I just didn't want to add for this project. Um, so this will be good enough for us, right? Um, it's generally um, going to work well enough, right? Well enough. Um, but we'll kind of sh introduce you to some add-ons that you can download uh, on our next project, but that's next term, right? Okay. Uh, so that's good enough, and that's just the default one, right? Remember, we didn't really have to UV and wrap the uh, column because the screw modifier already provided us with uh, solid, not perfect UVs, but solid UVs, right? All right, uh, so in this case, I'm going to go to 4 for object mode, and I'm going to switch back to texture paint workspace, right? It's a good idea to be in the texture paint workspace because you get kind of more of your painting tools here instead of UV and wrapping tools, right? Um, yeah, but te texture paint workspace, right? Um, by default, it puts you in texture paint mode, but there is a quick key for that, 8. Just like you see sculpt mode is right there, 5, right? That's our quiz for today, <laughs> right? Uh, didn't even use sculpting on this project, but we'll do it on our next project. Um, all right. So in this case, I do need to kind of swap out or create a new texture, right? Uh, and a new material. Uh, so I go to the red ball, right? And the nice thing is we've seen this a bunch uh, from our previous videos and even our UV and wrapping stuff, right? That red ball is where our material's at. Now, in this case, I can give it a different name, right? So we just click on the red ball. It shows the default material and everything. Remember, you can go right up here to where it says material, highlight it, blue, and just type in a name, right? So it's really easy to rename these materials. You can make a new one right there, and you can even apply uh, a different material if you have multiple from here. Uh, obviously, there is the shadering stuff, and we'll see that a little bit more next week, but um, you can do a, a decent amount from right here, too. Now, in this case, I do have that UV map plugged in and created, right? Now, remember, if you need to and you just want to disconnect this all together, you can left-click on this, right? Not the yellow dot, but just left-click kind of on that whole bar area, right, by base color. And you see one of the options is remove, right? That will actually fully get rid of that node and everything, right? Now, of course, in this case, we can see base color now has the yellow dot back with nothing plugged in. It's just the regular color. And I can click on that yellow dot, and you see it gives us these options. Most of what you saw from the other one, except when one's plugged in, you see that the options for remove or disconnect are also there also. So we go to image texture. And now we see there's an image texture plugged in, right? Remember, if you left click on that, remove becomes available, right? You can't click on the yellow dot, but you can click on the whole thing. But in this case, we want it plugged in. We want to go to new, right? So we click on new. I'll just call this column. And remember, if you want to go 2048, you can. If you uh, want to stay with 1024, that's OK also. You know, it's not going to be the sharpest resolution texture ever, but it, it does kind of depend on what your device could do, and your devices aren't that powerful, <laughs> right? So, um, so it kind of depends. If you just want to go with the default 1024, that's fine. In fact, I think I'll just keep that here. But in this case, remember, blank is what we actually want, so we don't have to change the generated type, right? If we're doing the UV grid for UV distortion, we kind of need to say, hey, UV grid. But blank is what we want to do if we're creating a brand new color map. Having said that, you can also go right up to this section, right? Because it's still the new image option. Name, you can change the resolution, right? The bigger the number here, the more pixels, the n sharper and uh, higher resolution your texture is going to be. But you can also pick color right here. Now, when you pick this, it brings up, you know, RGB, hue saturation value. Um, hex is like a specific, like you can actually put in the, uh, the actual um, specific number. There's like an actual table for these things. Um, HSV is usually a good default. 
So we just kind of click on the gray bar here and just drag it up a little bit so it's not black. And once we do that, we start to see the color. We just go in here and pick whatever kind of color we want. Something like that's fine. Maybe make it a little brighter. So your color's here. Your kind of brightness is here, if you will. Kind of lightness, if you will. And then we hit OK. And we now have a color map on there. Now remember, you do have to go over to here. Remember, texturing paint has your 3D view paint. But it also has your 2D view paint, which I'm actually going to show you a little bit today. Now, if I go up to here, kind of right up here towards the top, it's right below layout and modeling. Remember, I've actually already talked about this and shown this off in other videos. You'll see that there is kind of what says UV. Uh, it's got the little kind of pages, the folder, the X. Even it's got a little, even a little, little tack icon. But you'll notice there's also kind of a little window that's kind of a, a, a white triangle and a small white circle. If you click on that, that's your image browser, right? So I'm clicking right on that right there. And there's column. That way we make sure to have the actual column texture up and ready to go. And what I can do is I can just go to image, save or save as, uh, depending on what you want to do. Save it as column. There we go. I could have called it column color, but I'm really only painting a color map for this, so it's probably fine just as column, <laughs> right? But if you have multiple map types painted, you'll kind of give them different names, right? Uh, we're keeping it to just painting one map for each of these. Uh, we'll focus on painting multiple maps on the project two. Now, one of the things that you could do, remember, is to go up here to kind of turn on our material preview, right? There's the wireframe shade. There's the regular shade, which kind of shows you some level of the texturing. And then there's the third one, which is material preview, right? And that's going to show you Eevee. And I'll, I'll, show, I'll talk about that a little bit more on um, our chandelier, which we'll do in a minute or so. Now, in this case, I just wanted to show you that you could do 2D texture painting if you want to, right? If you have a highly repetitive geometric pattern that you want to texture onto something, it's actually better to use the 2D viewpoint for painting. Now, remember to load in an image to paint with, right? And this is just review. We did all this stuff yesterday, right? So if I just go down to the red checkerboard, right? Right below the red ball. They're kind of right here in our property editor, right towards the bottom on the right side. You see there's that red ball, and then there's that red checkerboard, right? Kind of looks like a chess board. I mean, it is a chess board, basically, right? Um, it's kind of this reddish salmon. If I click on that, you see it brings up the simple area where we can just go new to load in textures, right? And you see you do it for brush, brush mask, but this is kind of how you load in your textures for painting, usually, right? So we click on new. It brings this up, and we want to go to open, because in this case, we're wanting to bring something that's already an image with detail and a, a picture, right? Um, we want to already bring an existing one in. We don't want to make a new one. We want to bring a, one from outside in. So remember, these don't come with Blender, so you have to find them online. Uh, Textures.com is a great site to go to. Create the free account, right? Not the premium, right? Create the free account. And then what I can do is I can just go to my stencils folder because I've kind of created that. Uh, and usually it'll show recents here. You can add bookmarks, right, which is kind of cool. Um, but remember, there's also these up here, right? They'll show you kind of your uh, lists differently. And then the last one, it shows you thumbnail. Now, when you look at these, you can actually see that these are kind of geometric, right? And they repeat. Uh, this might be the kind of texture we want for our column, right? So if I was to say maybe, uh, you know, kind of grab this for the column and then hit open image, the image is in Blender now. So that means I can go up to, now you can always move your kind of little bar here, right, to make the one uh, window bigger or smaller, depending on what you're focusing on. Remember, we go up to the texture menu here. The texture is already available, right, but it is that little icon there and we want to switch mapping from tiled to stencil right and now you can see there's that texture right now remember if you right click you could move this control right click rotates it shift right click scales it now watch what happens if I paint this though on the model in 3d it's looking good but then I go to rotate here and I paint. 
and you notice it's not really lining up well. See how it's really ugly and it's not lining up properly? 3D projection painting is awesome most of the time, a lot of the time for texturing. There are times though where maybe a procedural texture, which we're not really going to address in Blender, uh, particularly on this project, or just 2D texture painting if you have a nice image. You see how this image repeats, right? This is actually a pattern that's repetitive and geometric. This is when painting in 3D is not the best option. Here's what's really cool about Blender and actually pretty much all 3D painting applications, substance painters like this too. You'll notice that I can actually go into and use all the same controls for my stencil in 2D mode. So see if I make this window bigger, all of a sudden you'll see, hey, shift right mouse button, I can make that larger, control right mouse button. And you'll see that I can actually go in here and paint two-dimensionally. You will tend to have a bit of a seam issue kind of right here at the ends. Um, for ours, let's not worry about that so much, right? Um, that would be kind of those, one of those things you try to line it up a little better so it, it properly repeats. Um, that'd be something where maybe you'd scale it up a little bit more just so it kind of cuts in half, right? So you're going to scale it up a little bit more so. And there's actually ways you could tile this, but I just I don't want to get into that with you guys quite yet, right? You can actually stretch these along the X or the Z axis, the, st the stencils. But if you actually make it a little bigger, you see how you can actually kind of have those line up reasonably well so they cut in half. But you can see how this goes on much better, much more like a normal texture, right? So 2D painting makes it a lot easier to do this kind of texturing on like a cylinder like this, like a column, or you like a hose or a pipe or a rope, right? If you have a repetitive geometric pattern, it tends to be much easier, particularly on a very curved surface like this. It tends to be easier to do 2D painting to get the better result, right? You see, it just gives us kind of a better appreciation for that. That's a big thing what I wanted to show you for this, right? At this point, you could always paint some other stuff, right? I could always load in a different texture. Um, Remember, we could always kind of uh, minimize this, but I just want to show you show you that you can use your stencil in the 2D view, and you can paint in the 2D view also. And you might use that for your column. You don't have to, right? If you just want to paint like more of a generic, uh, randomized marble, that's fine, right? <laughs> Remember, you can always go up to texture here, right, right there. It's where you can browse your different textures. Uh, it's where you could change. You can hit X to turn it off, and you can always switch your mapping mode, right? Uh, view plane or tile is a better option when you're not using stencils because your zoom, alt right mouse button works better. But remember, one of the things you can actually do is go back in here to say three for face mode. And remember, if I double click on a face or an edge uh, right in the middle of a face, it selects a face loop. Remember, your up and down arrows allow you to grow selection. And I can easily just go back into eight for texture paint mode turn on, remember that one right here, right next to texture paint is kind of this uh, white box with an invisible one that masks this. There's actually a fill bucket tool that you can click on. And you can go pick your color right here for that fill bucket. Let me make it a darker red. And I can click and adjust fill buckets on that. Obviously, you could always, you know, you know paint an actual image there uh, with the stencil. But just to show you that you can get something a little bit dynamic, right? Three for face mode. Double left click on an edge, kind of parallel to the um, that right. If I try to click here, it doesn't really know which way to go. So you always try to get closer to an edge, parallel to the direction. And when you do that, the face loop click key works great in Blender. And up arrow, right? That's our our select. Uh, that's our um, select more or less, right? Up arrow. And then, of course, 8 for texture paint mode, although it is part of our menus, so you can go to texture paint mode there. And you'll notice that this is still on, right? That uh, paint mask, this one right here, it's that white box with a, a kind of a, a, um, an empty box behind it. It's right next to view, right next to texture paint. That's already on. Fill bucket's already on. And this is one of the awesome things about Blender is you have that, that polygon mask feature, but you also have fill bucket, right? 
and that works based on that masking. And of course, we can go back up to the regular paint, which is the top one. You turn that off. And you know, not the most mind-blowing column ever, but it's enough to show you all the fundamental principles, right? Remind you about uh, fill bucket, remind you about masking, which we've seen before. Fill bucket's kind of newer though. But I figured it's an option. You don't have to use it, but it's uh, available. And that you can actually use your stencils in the 2D view, and that does actually help you to kind of lay the texture on this much more uh, accurately and realistically. You say you're getting a little bit of stretch because of those UVs? On this project, that's fine, right? I, I'm going to show you guys the text tool add-on because technically there's some level of straighten features default in Blender, but they're just not, they're not the most user-friendly and kind of have to finagle them a lot to get a result. Um, I'll show you the text tools add-on later on. It's a free add-on, kind of cool effect though. Uh, remember, your image hasn't been saved yet, right? So right up here, there's this little kind of asterisk next to image in the this the 2D space, right? Go there, and you can just hit save or save as. In this case, I've already kind of saved as the texture, so I can save it. Also remember, file, external data, automatically pack resources. Most of this we've seen in the other videos, so this is mostly review lecture. I just kind of threw in the fact that there is the paint bucket, and that you can use your stencil painting, which we've done a couple times already, in the 2D space. But all the rest of that stuff we've seen before, right? And of course, we could save the scene. There we go. Now, the chandelier, I'm just going to do some quick color painting on like the base, um, show you metalness and glow, right? So we're going to do that quick and dirty so we don't take too long with this video. So I'm going to go file open. And I'm going to go to uh, that one again so I can see my list. And let's see, chandelier. There we go. And of course, we'll go to texture paint workspace. And in this case, I'm just going to go to my red ball down here. And I'm going to click on the uh, UV section that's already plugged in and remove. That way it's unplugged. Remember, you can go to four for object mode. You can kind of turn the curves off for the moment. Now, I'm going to show you the spheres first. We can create a whole new material for these, right? Or just use the already one we have right now. Uh, in this case, I'm going to call this, say, Glow. I can go to this one right here, right? And you see how it says Glow? Well, I can just kind of click on these two white pages here, right? It's kind of a couple over from there. And I can change this to uh, just, call it, just call it Chandelier, right? And now you'll see there's two materials in here, chandelier and glow. And you can kind of tell which ones to go on which. And you see when you click on them, it shows glow, it shows chandelier. So making a new material is as easy as right there. It usually will use the default materials name. So you saw it was glow.001. Remember, you just kind of go in here, change it. There you go. Now in this case, I'm only going to use a material for this, right? Here's what's cool, though. I could turn the base color down for this to say black, right? And let's make sure uh, texture preview's on, right there. And that's your viewport shader. And then I'm going to turn down the specular, which is shininess, to zero, right? So specular is shininess uh, without metal qualities. Base color black. If I go down further, there's an area that says emission. If I click on that, this is actually what's going to give us our glow. So I can give it kind of a color there. Get out of there. And then we turn emission strength up, and it's going to start to look much more like a bright surface, right? That's how you do glow. Usually, you want the kind of colors for those areas and shininess to be turned down so that you're just getting the glow, right? Like this is a light source. But it's emission color for the color and emission strength for the intensity, right? So you see how there's plenty of things you could do without a texture at all that are really easy? Now I'm going to go up to here, um, right up to here, right? There is this area called render properties. It's right below the screwdriver and wrench. It looks like kind of a briefcase or a microwave, right, or a TV. It's that second one down. If I click on that, you'll see the rendering engine being used is Eevee. Make sure that's Eevee. There's a pull down because you can switch it to cycles. We'll see that next week. Make sure material preview is on up here, right? 
So it's that little kind of checkerboard one. And what you would do is you could turn on what's called bloom. And the moment you turn on bloom, you really get to see that glow in viewport. Now you can, of course, open this up for its options and say, hey, let's uh, turn down maybe the uh, radius for that a little bit so it doesn't glow quite so much. But we can even go to this material here, you know, the other object. We go back to the red ball down here. And remember, we could turn metallic up and roughness down to give us more of a shininess. And you'll see even Bloom kind of catches the light off of that surface better, right? But we can also go back up to that little kind of microwave box up here. You see how Bloom kind of makes the glow look better? Um, if you have a nice light source in, you'll see it catch off the metal better too. Uh, we probably won't see it as much now because our lights are turned off, <laughs> right? But you can also turn on what's called screen space reflections right here. And what this does, you see how it's actually going to have some level of non-ray trace reflection on the metal. So remember, this is kind of some of those neat things you can actually do with Eevee, right? And we'll see a little bit more as we start to get in the lighting um, next week. But you'd see the uh, actual um, a bright spot uh, on this metal uh, when you have a light on properly, right? I just don't want to go into that right now for you guys. We'll see that next week. But I did want to show that you can go into this box, right? It's right below the uh, wrench screwdriver. It's the second one down up here. Make sure rendering engine set to EV. And you can turn bloom on, and you can turn screen space reflections on. You can play with some of these controls here. And they'll really make your glow and your metals look glow and metal, right? Remember, though, I can go in here and turn the sphere off momentarily. Go back down to the red material, and if I want to, I can easily paint a bit of color on this, right? Click on the yellow dot for base color for this material, right? Go to image texture, go to new, let's call this um, chandelier color. And we'll pick a color so it's not black. <laughs> right? Blank's fine, right? That's the normal stuff. And then, of course, we can come over to here, kind of make sure to click on this, right? That little, right next to the UV, right next to image, it's like that white triangle, white dot. There's chandelier color. We can go to image, save, or save as just for the first time, and chandelier color, save as image. And remember, I can go back down to here, right? That The red checkerboard, new open. I'll go back to my stencils. Right, it's right here. This is where you guys are going to have to download your own images and know where you put them at, right? I can click on this one here for thumbnails. And if I want, I could find something a little more interesting, a little more metal-like. Right, I kind of have some kind of metal effects here. I can maybe grab that a little bit. All right. Make sure we're in texture paint mode again, right? H the click key, and then we'll see our texture controls. There's the texture. Switch it to stencil. Remember, we can bring right mouse button over here. Control right mouse button, rotate it. Shift right mouse button to scale. And you'll notice that I could actually paint color and still have the metalness effect. So if we want this to kind of have, you know, a bit of color on it, You could do that, right? And once again, we see that since this is a non-geometric pattern, it's actually going to paint pretty well just in 3D projection paint mode. And of course, you know, I can go back up to texture here, hit the X to turn it off. Usually I switch my mapping type back to like viewplane just so I can get my normal navigation back. You can always go back up to your red ball. And you can always turn that roughness up if you want this to be more of a brushed metal, right? Because that's got a bit of roughness in that color map. So maybe you want it to be rougher. And remember, we did some painting on that color image. So we see that the image menu up here in the 2D view, it's got an asterisk. So we'll save that. Make sure to go to File, External Data, Automatically Pack Resources. And then when I save the chandelier scene, 
it'll save that texture in there. Now in this case, you can see how my uh, ropes are glowing too, so I'll probably four for object mode, click on that. Go back up here and let's do a new material, right? Those two white pages. Call this ropes or something, right? Um, and in this case, what we could do is we could actually just, uh, you know, turn strength back to one for a mission. Turn the glow back to gray, right? And then we turn the base color back up to a normal color. And there we go. We see we've got a bit of glow. We've got a bit of shininess on stuff. All right, that's it. That'll be a great place to stop. Went a little longer on this one, though.